Hey guys, this is a special episode covering the three-day Asia-Pacific Spectrum Management Conference. If you haven't already, check out the day one and day two recaps. But onward to the third and final day. Day three kicked off with a look at how Indonesia is tackling the digital divide and connecting one of the most challenging geographies in the world. Indonesia continuously evaluates and enhances policies to include things like infrastructure sharing, rationalized spectrum fees, and licensing of 700 megahertz by 2022. It's also worth mentioning Indonesia recently auctioned 30 megahertz of technology neutral spectrum at 2.3 gigahertz, meaning it can be used for 4G, 5G, mobile, fixed wireless, or any combination. To connect the unconnected, the Cambodia government, under the Universal Service Obligation, or USO project, for rural areas, has built 297 sites by 2020, blanketing 100,000 people in mobile broadband services. The local government also provides incentives, tax relief, and other administrative assistance, and continuously evaluates operator network performance to keep it working effectively and affordably. Cambodia is looking to re-farm 700 megahertz from TV broadcasting and make it available for mobile broadband by 2023, while also preparing C-band to meet rural coverage obligations. The Director General of Spectrum Division of Bangladesh Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, BTRC, whew, that's a mouthful, shared some data for 2019 showing 16 billion of economic value comes from mobile industries, which is equivalent to 5.3% of Bangladesh's total GDP. Currently, Bangladesh is leveraging its 45,000 site strong 4G network to meet its mobile enabled digital inclusion vision, which already covers 95% of the population and will meet 98% in the next phase. In recent auctions, in March, the regular offered five years deferred payment for 1800 megahertz and 2100 megahertz, allowing operators to use cash flow for network deployment. And the regulator has adopted a quality of service policy to monitor mobile and fixed broadband services to ensure people get a decent service. Closing out the day, the chairman of industry study group of Etsy said there were more than 40 million links in operation worldwide. And over 70% of macro sites are connected with microwave and millimeter wave backhaul. So it's super critical to license E-band from 71 to 86 gigahertz to allow faster deployment of 5G services. I mean, the people want 5G already. E-band applications are growing at more than 50% year on year, and wireless backhaul needs to keep up, especially if we want to cover rural areas where fiber doesn't exist. And frankly, that's an awful lot of Asia Pacific we're talking about. That's it for this day three and final recap of the Asia Pacific Spectrum Management Conference. Thanks for watching. Has it been three days already? Wow.